Mary Cat. I've learned many of Scientology acronyms and stupid words that they use. One thing I don't understand is what is the birthday game? All right, the birthday game. In the 1970s, when L. Ron Hubbard was running around on the, on the ship, the, the, the ships that, uh, that made up the sea organization, he was asked by his aides and people who worked for him what he wanted for his birthday. March 13th is L. Ron Hubbard's birthday, and every year that would roll around, and Hubbard would always say, I want Scientology expansion. I want things to be bigger with Scientology. I want us reaching more people. I want, us, I want those statistics that, that we keep to be going up, 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 right? And uh, that's what I want. I don't, you know, I don't want a car. I don't want a house. I don't want a, you know, new ascot. I don't want a, you know, motorcycle or anything. Although he got all those things for his birthdays. Um, he said he wanted Scientology expansion. So what happened was either, I don't know whether he crafted it or his um, subordinates did, but they created, they, what, what Hubbard said and what I believe happened is the, the aides and the people who were working for him come, you know, around February or March, they would start sending direction to all the Scientology organizations around the world saying L. Ron Hubbard's birthday is coming up and he wants expansion. So let's give him some, uh, you know, some up statistics, right? Let's have some production reflected in our production statistics. And as you know, every week, Scientology keeps track of how many new people came in, how many students were on course, how many people got audited, how many hours they were audited. They have hundreds of production statistics that they keep and they graph these every week on pieces of paper. And Scientology staff and Sea Org members live and die by these statistics. So, so the measure of production would be reflected in these statistics. So it was always a thing to send Ron up statistics for his birthday. And so what formulated from this was a game because um, as Hubbard put it, um, the March 13th would come, all the statistics would be up, and then after March 13th, no more birthday. Pfft, down go all the statistics, right? And everybody's like, rah, you know, how if you guys could do it this week, why can't you do it the next week and the next and the next, right? Because like I said, they, the, the staff and the Sea Org members, they, they live and die by these statistics, right? You can get in a lot of trouble if your statistics are down. So they formulated a game where they assigned every week points to up statistics. If, you're, if, you're, if your graph was a little bit up, you got one point. If it was way up, you got three points. And the idea was to keep them going up all year long, okay? And this, and, and then they would assign points to each of the different statistics. And there were something like 50 or 52 statistics or something in every organization. So you could get, you know, every week you could potentially make, if it was three points per graph and you could make every graph go straight up, you could potentially be getting three points. So that's 150, you know, 160, 170 points um, as an organization. And another organization, right? And it didn't matter if it was small organization with four staff or if it was a big organization with 50, that it was the slant of the line that determined how many points you were getting per statistic. And so a small org that might do a little bit better that week, but have its graphs really up, and so make a bunch of points, and they could beat a larger organization, right? Because the ratio of their expansion compared to the larger organization was more. So they were expanding more, therefore they were getting more points. And this birthday game, what they would do is tally all the points for all the organizations in quarter, every quarter, and every year. And at the end of the year, the organization that had the most points would win the birthday game. And they started holding in the 1980s and 90s, they started holding events where they would big, give big trophies to, these, to the executives of these organizations. And, and playing the birthday game amongst all the Scientology organizations around the world became a big deal. And because it was all based on the slant of those graphs, that's, this just increased the amount of pressure and, and drive to get those statistics up through any means possible, often falsely. And so you had every year, like just constantly going on 
where we would be busting people for false statistics because they were faking it because they wanted to win the birthday game, right? Um, and like I said, and, and not just because of the birthday game itself, but because of the way Scientology staff and Sea members are run, you live and die by those statistics. So, you know, you, you, if you're getting in a lot of trouble for having a down statistic, but you are, you know, considered the bee's knees if your statistics are up and you're winning the birthday game, right? Because they're tracking this every week, then you're considered a hero, right? You can go from zero to hero in a week by having these up statistics. So this was the birthday game and this, is, was, this was how it was played. And, the, and management, Scientology management, kept promoting this and kept pushing this game for years and years, even well after L. Ron Hubbard died. It just became a tradition and it still is. Uh, and that is the birthday game.